Hello again, we're continuing in the book of Exodus. And so far, we have looked at the most important and holy objects uh, in the house of the Lord uh, in chapter 25. And then in chapter 26, we looked at the tabernacle itself and what was necessary in order for that to have structure and stability. And now we're going to look at the outside of the tabernacle and that area outside that's called the, the court of the tabernacle. So what we need to realize is that there was an experience of the worshiper that someone would be able to go into the court. What would they see there? Let's we'll, we'll take a look at that. But then they might be able to go into the court, but they could go no further couldn't go into the holy place, couldn't go into the most holy place, depending on who they were and what time it was. So it's a whole experience of worship that's so foreign to us, but very real for them. And these passages help us, you know, to be reminded of that. This was a real system and God had a purpose for this system. It's also important for us to think about this, that this system no longer really exists in Judaism today uh, because there is no temple uh, today in Judaism where sacrifices are offered up to God. The temple in, the Jerusalem, uh, in Jerusalem is, is not there. So for all these years since the destruction of the temple uh, and since the coming of Jesus, there's been no temple there. Let's take a look at, at what we see in chapter 27. First of all, you have a bronze altar. So this would, would have been one of the conspicuous things that you saw on the way into the tabernacle. Now, an altar is a place for the sacrifice of animals. And this altar had horns, uh, bronze horns. And throughout the history of Israel, there would be times when people would, looking for mercy, would come and um, put, put their hands on the horns of the altar. Why? Why would there be a connection between the altar and mercy? The reason is that the sacrifice has something to do with grace, that someone else or something else is standing in the place where I should be. I have guilt, but I need mercy. So I need something else to stand in my place and take my guilt for me, preferably something that actually has righteousness. So see, all of this is in the system of the altar and all of it points forward to the sacrifice of Christ. Ultimately, see, if we're going to come into the house of God and be with God, we have to go via an altar and there has to be an acceptable sacrifice. Okay. Now, while we're outside the tabernacle, though, there's this thing called a court. And this court would have been a place for people to inquire and to learn and grow. Those who were seeking the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Really, all the nations should have been clamoring to come into this uh, court of God in, in the history that led up to the coming of, of Jesus. But instead, what happens is that this court, which is, uh, is described here as to how it's supposed to be built, would eventually become what, what the prophets called the den of thieves and what Jesus quoted that uh, regarding what was happening in the courts that should have been a, a house, for the house of prayer for the nations. It, it was a den of thieves. So um, this would have been a place of great delight. It should have been of coming near to the Almighty God and longing for the day when there would be some way provided for us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Now we have that way through the Lord. Before it was just symbolic. You have these hangings of fine twined linen and, and pillars and bases and hooks and so forth, a gate of the court, a screen, utensils for the tabernacle, all these symbolic things. But one day, the real one would arrive and we'd have access. Now, last thing in 27, Exodus 27 that's mentioned is the oil for the lamp. See, without the oil, you might have a nice lamp, but there's no light that's coming without this oil. And we know that the oil is frequently symbolic of the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. See, the church is supposed to be the light of the world, but if we don't have the oil of God in us, what are we? It's a very dark place in that tabernacle without the light there. But now the light has come and the Holy Spirit has been poured out 
upon the church. You see how these symbolic things are very rich for us? Yeah, we, we have the reality. We don't want to go back to the symbols except to understand them. But we have the real thing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your courts, and we enter your courts, Lord, and we praise you, we honor you as, as those who have been brought in through Jesus, adopted into the household of God, and receiving this wonderful Holy Spirit. Now we lay hands on the horns of the altar. We have mercy given to us through the blood of an acceptable sacrifice, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, thank God for Jesus and for the gift of his Holy Spirit. Have a great day.